Konbanwa. Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. Thank you for joining Sustainable Recovery Time to Act. Today's forum is organized by Tokyo Metropolitan Government, supported by C40 and ICLE. My name is Togo Uchida, and I will be the facilitator for today's session. We have a great lineup uh, of very influential speakers from across the world, providing us their insights on overcoming the COVID-19 crisis and accelerating climate actions for sustainable future. But first, I would like to invite Governor Koike to give an opening speech. Governor Koike, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Now, I would like to thank you for participating in Sustainable Recovery, Time to Act, Overcoming the COVID-19 Crisis and Accelerating Climate Actions for the Future. And as we work toward the, the socio-economic recovery from the COVID-19 crisis, Tokyo is promoting a sustainable recovery for all people in addition to climate change measures. And using this meeting to kick off these initiatives, I would like to clearly acknowledge the threat of the climate crisis and in the spirit of the Time to Act slogan. Develop the climate, change, climate action movement in collaboration with C40, for which I act as a vice chair, and as well as the, with ICLE. So I'm keen to promote actions for the decarbonization of the world from the perspective of a sustainable recovery by working with the mayors and experts who are proactively addressing climate change issues. So uh, let's enjoy this uh, online meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor Koike. Now, before we go into the next session of the program, please allow us to have a moment so that we can take a group photo. May I ask all speakers to switch on your camera, if you haven't, and with a countdown to three, the organizers will take the screenshot. So I will count. Three, two, one. Okay. Good. <laughs> Thank you very much for your cooperation. <laughs> to start off, I would like to come back to Governor Koike uh, to provide us the background of today's event and Tokyo's respond to the current crisis. So, Governor, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, let's. Well, in December 2019, the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, or the TMG, formulated the Zero Emission Tokyo Strategy and announced the roadmap and concrete initiatives with the aim of net zero CO2 emissions by 2050. People's behavior has greatly changed due to the COVID-19 crisis, and the climate crisis has become even more serious in the years since the announcement. The actions we take during this decade to the 2030 milestone are crucial in realizing net zero CO2 emissions by 2050. And at the Davos agenda last month, I announced that Tokyo will, by 2030, reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 50% from the levels in 2000 and increase the use of electricity generated by renewable sources to 50%. So today, I would like to introduce three specific actions Tokyo will accelerate under the, our strong leadership. The first is time to act for sustainable buildings. A large part of the CO2 emissions of cities is derived from buildings, and achieving zero emissions from buildings is a common challenge and goal for cities around the world. Now, Tokyo is introduced an urban cap and trade program in 2010 ahead of the rest of the world. And this landmark initiative requires emissions reducing at existing buildings, including office buildings, and is attracting a great deal of interest from New York and other cities, other cities overseas. For more than 30,000 small and medium-sized businesses, Tokyo has implemented a mandatory energy data reporting program, which has also drawn a lot of attention primarily from Asian cities. 
and taken advantage of the characteristics of Tokyo with its concentration of real estate and financial institutions. Tokyo will introduce policies including the cap and trade program and measures taken by businesses for sustainable buildings to ESG finance management institutions. And through collaboration with businesses and financial institutions, TMG will further strengthen its policies to ensure that uh, highly eco-friendly buildings are also valued in terms of finance by conducting case studies on information disclosure that helps investment decisions. And the second is time to act for green hydrogen. The, as you know, the world has started making CO2 free hydrogen generated from renewable energy, a pillar in the realization of a decarbonized society. And since the opening of the first commercial hydrogen station in Tokyo in 2014, and 21 stations have been in operation, and the TMG is proceeding with infrastructure development. And more than 80 fuel cell buses are in commercial operation today in Tokyo. And during the Tokyo 2020 games, hydrogen generated from renewable energy will be used at several facilities in the Olympic Village. In December last year, the TMG held the Tokyo Hydrogen Initiative Conference to upgrade its efforts together with businesses that are developing hydrogen business worldwide from the perspective of promoting the decarbonization of the transport sector, the TMG will encourage the start of the full-scale utilization of hydrogen-related technologies currently on the market by sharing examples of such technologies used for mobility in Tokyo. And along with cities around the world, we will start preparations for the realization of a city that fully utilizes the potential of green hydrogen. And the third green finance, uh, the third is green finance, and to promote a sustainable recovery, it is essential to further popular, popular, uh, popularize green finance, which is an investment in the future and expand its market. As an international financial center, Tokyo is develop, developing various policies related to green finance to solve environmental and financial issues. In addition to issuing green bonds ahead of other local government in Japan, like uh, Paris uh, does, uh, the TMG has established a Tokyo version of the ESG fund as a mechanism to create a flow of funds for the expand use of renewable energy. Now, we have selected a wind power plant in Iwate Prefecture, the north, northern part of Japan, as the first investment destination. And as a new initiative, the TMG, Tokyo Metropolitan Government, is advancing studies for the creation of green finance market in order to ensure the inflow of funds heading to ESG investment from home and abroad. Now the TMG will also start efforts to create a new flow of funds by setting up a sustainable energy fund to, inve uh, to invest in clean energy supply infrastructure such as uh, renewable energy power plants and hydrogen uh, stations. So through these efforts, Tokyo will establish itself as a leader in the world green financial market. And as a leading eco-friendly city and an international financial center, Tokyo will continue to develop various policies and demonstrate leadership for the decarbonization of the world in cooperation with international networks such as C40 and ICLE. Thank you. Thank you very much, Governor Koike. I think that message was very clear and very encouraging to see your leaderships. You. Now I would like to move on to our guests. Uh, our first speaker will be Mayor Anne Hidalgo of Paris. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today.
Thank you. Thank you so much for your invitation. Arigato, Gouverneur Koike. And uh, Merci the beaucoup. mayor, dear friend, I'm very happy to be with uh, you today in this uh, uh, very interesting uh, forum. For a year now, the health crisis has impacted our lives and uh, our relationships with others. Uh, the entire world is affected by ordeal. To this major crisis, we can add the effect of climate change. Paris is no exception. We also experienced heat waves and pollution peaks. These episodes, more frequent and extreme, compel us to come up with solutions to protect uh, our health and uh, that of our children. For this reason, five years uh, after the COP21 and uh, the signing of the Paris Climate Agreement, I decided to organize uh, the Zero Carbon Forum in Paris on December 10 and 11, and many of you attended. And I think of uh, Eureka, of Mike Bloomberg, Eric Gassetti, once again, thank you so much. During the forum, we reaffirmed a crucial point to address climate change, we need the local authorities and the cities. Cities have a key role to play to build an economic model close to the people, based on solidarity and respect of uh, the planet. Having signed the Paris Declaration together with more than 100 local authorities and cities networks such as uh, ICLI and the C40, we have committed ourselves uh, to keeping global warming, warming below 1.5 uh, degrees and to achieving uh, carbon neutrality by 2050 at the latest and reduce our emission by 2030. This is a major step of which we can be proud. And I thank Tokyo for signing the declaration. The title of your conference reminds us that the time for action has come. Yes, it's time to act. It's time to bring justice, social and climate to protect the most vulnerable. It's time to speed up thermal insulation of building and uh, develop local uh, renewable energies. It's time to truly achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. Since 2040, uh, 14, sorry, I have been implementing these policies in Paris. We changed to a non-pollution mode of transportation. We have created a large network of bike lanes. I invite you in Paris uh, with your bike. Uh, it is time to bring back nature to the city. We must plant more trees, develop urban cooling islands, and add uh, fountains in uh, streets and squares. Finally, it is time to push forward energy transition, sustainable food, agriculture, and biodiversity, eating high quality food and watching, watching our children grow up in a clean environment. It's a right we must guarantee to all. We are at a decisive moment. Recovery plans are unfolding around the world. We have an opportunity to take a new economic path serving the planet and our health. We must seize this opportunity for it alone will protect our common goods. This promise must be kept. We owe it to the citizens who trust us in our cities. We owe it to future generations. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. very much. Thank you very much, Mayor Hidalgo. I would like to move on to Susan Rockefeller and David Rockefeller Jr. Thank you very much for joining us in a very early morning. Uh, both of you throughout your careers and through your current respectful positions have actively engaged in environment and social issues and it's very inspiring. So Susan, from you, what will be your key actions um, that you would accelerate, please? So greetings everyone and thank you, Governor Koike, for convening us to address decarbonization with the initiative Time to Act Now 
and confront the biggest systemic threat facing humanity, which is climate change. As founder of Musings Magazine, we profile business leaders in responsible innovation who address solutions for a decarbonized and more sustainable world. I also sit on the board of Oceana with my husband, David, because we both know that it is time to act now mm. to save our oceans. Mm. And here are the reasons. The world fish population has been steadily decreasing, putting a key source of food and income at risk for millions of people around the world. Last year, the world's oceans reached the hottest temperatures on record, making the ocean more acidic, destroying marine ecosystems, and continuing to threaten food security. Ocean acidification, which is linked to carbon emissions, is decimating coral reefs and jeopardizing all ocean animals, including those that develop their own shells and are a crucial part of numerous food chains. Mangroves and salt marsh ecosystems are also under threat from development and sea level rise. These challenges are compounded by plastic pollution. 15 million metric tons of plastic wash into the sea every year, and that's the equivalent of two garbage trucks worth of plastic being dumped into the ocean every minute. This will triple by 2040, where there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean unless we change course. It will take dedicated business leaders and civic leaders to solve the ocean crisis. What can we do? We can leverage critical innovation and technology to prevent overfishing. Oceana, along with Google and SkyTruth, created Global Fishing Watch, an open source technology platform for governments to monitor fishing fleet activity and curb illegal fishing around the world. Hundreds of millions of people depend on the ocean for their livelihoods, many of whom are the poor and most vulnerable. If we restore our oceans, we can create more jobs and continue to feed a billion people a healthy seafood meal each day. It is our time to act now by supporting organizations like Oceana and Sailors for the Sea Japan, partnering with visionaries like Mike Bloomberg, who lead in innovative philanthropic solutions for a decarbonized future, and so many of you here today in civic leadership, and supporting corporations and, that are committed to and at the forefront of integrating climate solutions into their business practices. Our choices matter. Choosing to eat sustainable seafood and plant-based proteins, designing alternatives to single-use plastic, and collaborating with committed leadership across all sectors, for this will advance decarbonization goals to save the oceans and feed the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Susan. Yeah. David, what will be your key actions, please? Thank you very much, Koi san And uh, in regard to the global climate crisis and decarbonization, I have four quick points to make. The important role of investors, of oceans, of renewables, and of subnationals. First, I am happy to say that investors have finally accepted that climate risk must be part of their thinking, and they're choosing to avoid companies which are heavy carbon contributors and to select companies which have chosen the path of sustainability. As a result, Rockefeller Capital Management has teamed with Bloomberg to create an ESG Improvers Index which will inform investors about companies on the right path to sustainability in all dimensions. Secondly, and as Susan has already said, oceans um, are important carbon sinks. And Japan, as a nation famous for its seafood, should be especially concerned. Groups like Sailors for the Sea Japan, powered by Oceana, and kindly supported by Governor Koike, are important sources of information about how to help. Third, the most important step which can be taken toward decarbonization is to stop using coal-fired power generation and switch to renewable energy production, as Governor Koike was mentioning. I regret to say that renewables in both Japan and the U.S lag far behind Europe in this regard. Mm. Although recently President Biden and Prime Minister Suga 
have signed initiatives aimed at a carbon-free society, and that's a good beginning. The climate crisis, however, cannot be solved by central governments alone. Subnationals, too, must play a role. For example, in the U.S., both New York State and California have been leaders in climate policy. And great cities like Tokyo, Paris, New York, and Los Angeles also have significant roles to play with regard to carbon reduction, not only in the absolute tonnage of carbon kept from the atmosphere, but also in their ability, in your ability, to persuade other cities to follow suit. It is time to act, to ensure a livable world for all of our grandchildren. It will be vital that investors, oceans, renewables, and subnationals all play their part. So I fervently support the RE100 effort led by many of the world's great companies, a large proportion of which do business in Japan. And I look forward to witnessing Tokyo's continuing progress and leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for that very insightful comment. Now we'd like to ask our Japanese guests here today to give their views. Uh, Kawaguchi-san, can we start from you, please? Thank you. Konbanwa. Greetings, everybody. I'm very much honored and I'm very grateful to Tokyo Metropolitan Government and also to Governor Koike to be invited to this important event to deliver a message yeah. Mm. Um, um, I think you are muted. Maybe the sound Kawaguchi is. -san. Kawaguchi -san. Okay, I think we may um, come back to Kawaguchi san later on. Um, yeah. And I think I will move on to the next speaker first, and then we will expect Kawaguchi san to come back. So, um, so um, yes, so I would like to turn on to Ishii-san. So uh, from your wide range of experience, I'm interested to hear your perspectives on actions needed right now. So Ishii-san, please, the floor is yours. Uh, sure, I just feel very sorry for Kawaguchi-san. Yes. <laughs> Are you sure I can go ahead? Yes, please. <laughs> All right, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, so let me. That, yeah, I, I too uh, also uh, want to start by thanking Governor Koike for inviting me to this event. Uh, this gives me an opportunity to mingle, even if through screen, with mayors and allies I respect a lot. In my previous capacity as CEO of the GEF, Global Environment Facility, I was so impressed with the city leaders' commitments to fight against climate change. I worked with C40 and Ikure, um, Governor Koike and Madame Anne Hidalgo, Paris Mayor and then C40 Chair, to design the GF program to help their effort, tireless effort, uh, to, to fight the climate change. Their commitment led to the successful agreement of Paris Accord. Unfortunately, environmental crisis has been worsening, even if 30 or so of C40 cities have peaked their GHG emissions. GHG continue to rise in other parts of the world. But worse, the challenge is compounded by COVID-19. And in my view, these crises are results of our economic system pushing the capacity of the Earth system. As such, the fundamental solution is to transform our way of life as Madame Hidalgo already spoke, so that we can live a sustainable life within the planetary boundaries. Scientists tell us that we have only 10 years left to change the course to avoid our falling from the cliff. The role of cities has never been greater. City leaders can design a roadmap to achieve net zero with smart design, clean energy, sustainable building and green finance. Many cities, including Tokyo, have their plans and started to implement them as very well articulated by Governor Koike. Around the globe, however, only three to 5% of 15 trillion US dollars 
of green stimulus package is directed to green investment. This means a majority of resources is spent to cement the business as usual. City leaders should continue to lead the way, inspire the rest of the world by demonstrating green and just <clears throat> transition, and that is our future. I'm happy to see Nigel, Nigel Topping, present here mm -hmm. as COP26 high-level champion. I'm sure he will continue to beat the drum towards Glasgow. <laughs> and I, con I commit myself as director for the Center for Global Commons at the University of Tokyo. We'll join our hands to act together. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ishi-san. I think we may have Kawaguchi-san back online, so I think we could try Kawaguchi-san again. So, Kawaguchi-san? Yes. Sorry. Oh, fantastic. Can you hear us? Yes. yes. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm glad. Um, Kumbanwa, thank you very much for letting me speak here for uh, Governor Koike and Tokyo Metropolitan Government. And since we have only few, lim we have limited time left for the, this great transition, and today I have only three minutes, although I got the second chance. <laughs> I'll be very brief and will propose four actions for individuals. Firstly, everybody start now with what you eat every day. Agriculture and food industry is responsible for 30% of what you eat every day. And, and it's a major threat to biodiversity. If we take a little more care about everyday food, about the sustainability, whether locally made, organic, fair trade, agroforestry, and of course, uh, sustainable seafood, plant-based, and so on. And at the same time, think twice before wasting what is still edible. The global environmental landscape should change dramatically. Secondly, regarding sustainable business and technologies, just as we mentioned, we should respect the wisdom of the past when our ancestors are thriving to make the life more convenient and pleasant without the power of carbon. Such wisdom should be combined with the latest science and technology and will surely lead to real sustainable uh, business and lifestyle. Uh, thirdly, change the criteria of the value set. We should no longer pursue maximization of our own money and profit. Instead, try to seek the optimal solution for all the stakeholders in the society. And this new value set will be the basic of sustainable finance decision making also. Last but not least, we should all be grateful to the Mother Earth, the most beautiful and fragile planet in the universe, who is generous enough to let human being prosper until now and still giving us the very last chance to make ourselves more sustainable. Thank you all for your kind attention and wish everybody success of the challenges in this coming decade. Arigatou gozaimashita. Thank you. Thank you very much. Arigatou. Very interesting and very important message that the key to sustainability could be found in our tradition mixed with the modern technology. So. Now I would like to introduce a video message from Michael Bloomberg, recently reappointed as by United Nations Security General as a special envoy on climate ambition and solutions. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to be part of today's conference to discuss such an important topic at this critical moment. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken a devastating toll on so many families, health systems, and the economy in Tokyo and around the world. Now that effective vaccines have been developed, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. But we still have much more to do to recover. We also have another massive challenge to confront, climate change. The good news is taking on climate change can help to drive our recovery from the pandemic. Investing in clean energy and climate solutions will create good jobs and begin to rebuild the global economy while supporting the fight against climate change. Now is the time to act. We don't have a moment to waste, and cities, businesses, and local leaders are already leading the way. I want to thank Governor Koike for her important work on this issue, including launching a comprehensive and ambitious strategy to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2050. At Bloomberg Philanthropies, 
We're helping cities and local groups make progress across Japan. We've long supported C40, a global network of major cities like Tokyo that are committed to fighting climate change and sharing solutions. We helped to launch Japan Beyond Coal, a grassroots campaign dedicated to driving the transition from coal to clean energy, which will be critical to ensuring a sustainable recovery. We've also supported the growth of the Japan Climate Initiative, an alliance of businesses, research institutions, local governments, and other organizations working to advance climate action across the country. Recently, more than 90 corporate members, including Bloomberg LP, call for raising Japan's renewable energy target to 50% by 2030 as a major step towards sustainable recovery. To build on the progress these groups have made in Japan and around the world, it is essential that we put sustainability at the heart of our economic recovery plans. And together, we can rebound from the pandemic in a way that is stronger, greener, and more resilient than ever before. Thank you. Okay, now I would like to move on to Mr. Philip Hildebrand from BlackRock. Good afternoon, and thank you for being patient. Uh, as a vice chairman of the world's largest asset managing company, what will be your key actions that you will accelerate? Please. Good evening, and, and thank you, Governor Koike, for inviting me to join you uh, for this extraordinary gathering. The COVID-19 pandemic has presented us with an existential crisis, and it's forcing us to confront the global threat of climate change more forcefully, while also considering the effects it will have on our lives. In a post-COVID world, we will have to marshal our efforts to tackle crucial challenges in health, taxation, education, reskilling, and energy transition, among other areas. Our economies will have to recalibrate from maximum efficiency to greater resilience, from just in time to just in case. An ever-growing body of research underpins the proposition that sustainability risk is investment risk. BlackRock's own extensive research into the relationship between sustainable investing and financial risks combined with shifting client preferences gave us the conviction and determination at the beginning of 2020 that we were at the crossroad of a fundamental reshaping of finance and that it was our fiduciary duty towards our clients to respond to it. We believe that we are at the beginning of a fundamental reallocation of private capital as markets begin to price climate risks into the value of securities. Private capital, by the way, which is much needed to fund the transition to a net zero world in 2050. Although significant public spending commitments have been made in the last 12 months, these are not enough uh, to fund the transition to a net zero world in 2050. In order to deliver on this objective, we need to mobilize huge quantities of private capital Estimates range today from three and a half to six and a half trillion dollars annually. Bridging this investment gap requires a confluence of efforts, both at the investor as well as at the policy level, with governments providing further impetus to include sustainable considerations in the investment processes. When your Prime Minister, Prime Minister Suga, set out the new climate agenda for Japan in October last year, he said that responding to climate change is no longer a constraint on economic growth, but rather an opportunity for economic growth. And we very much agree. More and more investors and asset owners are now explicitly putting sustainability at the heart of their investment strategies, seeking tangible progress on environmental and social goods alongside financial returns. In doing so, not only do financial actors recognize that it is impossible for business as usual strategies to achieve net zero by 2050, but there is growing conviction that sustainable strategies represent a long-term opportunity for higher, more diversified, and therefore more robust returns. By providing sustainable investment options, the financial industry can help play its part in the transition to a net zero world in 2050. Doing so is not only a question of long-term societal well-being, but rather the best way
to protect the long-term financial prospects of investors and, in our case, of our clients. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Hildebrand. Very exciting. The next speaker is Takenaka-san. Please share us your perspectives. Well, thank you very much for this opportunity, Governor Koike. Uh, you are a real concept leader and also action leader uh, in this field, not only in Japan, but also in the world. I really appreciate the effort. Well, and the COVID-19 crisis, the world is now facing so many difficulties. Uh, it is doubtless. We have to conquer this crisis by gathering all people's wisdom. However, at the same time, we have a great opportunity to enhance a momentum towards sustainable recovery, realizing carbon-free uh, society. And now in many cities in the world, a blue sky has come back because transportation and various economic activities were restricted. Uh, this blue sky well illustrates how seriously the pla this planet has been polluted by emission of carbon dioxide. Uh, this is bringing about an important opportunity for all of us to deepen the un understanding on the importance of this issue. Although COVID-19 crisis is a very serious problem, it will be conquered or at least weakened, hopefully, in several years. However, environmental problem is a long-term challenge for human beings. So taking this opportunity, we have to strengthen our commitment towards sustainable recovery and carbon-free society. In Japan, regrettably, some business leaders and politicians have been reluctant or at least not very active for carbon-free movement. However, four months ago, when the current Prime Minister Suga took office, he explicitly declared that Japan commit in realizing carbon-free society by 2050. Also, the government provided a large scale of budget in the name of Green Fund to support innovation on renewable energy and to help businesses with high contribution to our carbon-free society. And also, the government has shown the roadmap to 2050, though the content is not, not so completed. But anyway, the government is moving to, toward that direction. The important point is that we have to take an action right now, not in the future. According to Dr. Jogren Landers of Norway, even if we can rewrite carbon-free society right now, the global warming will continue and the temperature on the earth will continue to rise for the coming more than 10 years. We economists sometimes use the term the Minsky moment. The Minsky moment indicates the timing when total system changes drastically and dramatically. It is clear that we are facing the Minsky moment for carbon-free society. And taking this opportunity and not missing the opportunity, let's take a strong action towards carbon-free society, not in reactive manner, but in proactive manner. Thank you. Thank you very much, Takenaka-san. Now we would like to move on to Yoshitaka-san. Yoshitaka-san, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for inviting me, uh, Governor Koike, to such a great event. I'm so excited. I'm so honored to be here today uh, because uh, I've been involved in uh, more than 25 years for uh, climate financing, including the international emission trading. And I always admire you that uh, you take a uh, leadership in uh, emission trading, green finance, and so on. But uh, uh, before that, I would like to express my sympathies to the who were damaged by the Tohoku earthquake last week. Even under the disaster of the COVID-19, other disaster will not wait. So it's climate change. I, I talked to the youth to know they are very concerned about the, some of the issues in the SDGs, such as inequality, gender, and climate change. You may know that Cambodia has 400 infected by COVID-19 and no death. A friend of mine in Cambodia complained that the lockdown of the world 
had a major impact on their economy, which consists primarily of the agriculture and tourism. The effects by the pandemic are not the same in the world, so it's climate change. Prime Minister Suga announced that Japan would declare net zero emissions by 2050, uh, everybody mentioned already, and promote decarbonization. Sustainable finance can play an important role in increasing investment and combating climate change and clean energy to achieve the decarbonization and recover from COVID-19. As Governor Koike mentioned, the now green finance market will be launched in Tokyo. And uh, I, I like to contribute, any con uh, make a contribution as much as I can. So with Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games and the COVID-19, we are given the opportunity to rethink the current value we have and redesign to our economy and society. The SDGs are goals that we achieved by 2030, but they are universal issues that must always not be forgotten. Water disaster from climate change cause water conflicts and spur refugee problems. When the temperature rises, crops cannot be harvested enough and poor farmers may have a hard time living. Climate change has the latest impact on the Bolan people. We must keep in mind that all issues are connected. Particularly, Japan is in a terrain hit by many disasters where the birth rate is rapidly declining and it is aging at the fastest rate in the world. Tokyo is the center of this. We have the wisdom and the power to overcome those difficulties and share with the colleagues here. We must act together now from Tokyo to pass on the sustainable society to the future generation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yoshitaka-san. Now I would like to introduce our second video message. We have received a precious video message from Mayor of Los Angeles, Eric Garcetti. Please. Hello. Watashi wa Eric Garcetti desu. I'm Eric Garcetti, the Mayor of Los Angeles and the Chair of C40 Cities. I'm so grateful to my friend, Governor Koike, for this invitation to join you at this important conference. And thank you, Governor, for your extraordinary leadership in the global fight to save our planet, to safeguard our future, and to confront the existential threat of climate change. For great cities like Tokyo and Los Angeles, these threats aren't far off in the distance. They are here right now. They reach into our neighborhoods, impact our families, change our economies. And here's the bottom line. Our cities are in danger, and we have a critical role to play in decarbonizing our planet. From Los Angeles to London, Toronto to Tokyo, C40 cities have established their own roadmaps to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement. Many more are on track to cutting their global emissions in half by 2030. And starting in 2021, all C40 cities will be required to adopt a climate action plan. Now we're taking one more critical step with a campaign called Cities Race to Zero, where at least 1,000 cities, large and small, are taking bold action to bring the Paris Agreement to life and meet the goals of the global Green New Deal. By acting together, we can make sure that the global recovery is a green recovery. We can create 50 million green jobs by 2025, prevent a quarter million premature deaths, and save $1.4 billion in healthcare costs. In Los Angeles and across the American West, cities are boldly transitioning away from coal to cheaper, healthier, renewable sources of energy to light our homes and power our businesses. And Tokyo is doing its part too, showing the world how to harness the power of sustainable buildings, setting the standard for curbing emissions through green hydrogen energy. This, my friends, is the task of our time. There's no problem more pressing, no challenge more urgent. So let's stay focused and stay strong and forge forward towards a cleaner, fairer, and better world. Domo arigato gozaimasu. Good Japanese. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now I would like to move on to Governor of Jakarta, Anis Beswaden. Good evening, Governor. Uh, thank you for your patience. <laughs> what will be your key actions? Please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, peace be upon all of us. Ms. Koike, the Honorable Governor of Tokyo, distinguished speakers. 
we live in a truly challenging time indeed. Uh, cities are on the front lines to face both the challenges and also the opportunities. Uh, cities around the world are facing the hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic, but also by the devastating impacts of the climate change. However, it is also cities that have come up with innovations, collaborations, and major actions to tackle those enormous challenges. Let's take the COVID-19 pandemic as an example. <clears throat> as people movement are being restricted, cities' economy is slowing down. But on the other hand, many cities and its populations are experiencing a rare experience. What is that? Clean air, including us here in Jakarta. And during the pandemic, uh, Jakarta has been taking the momentum to successfully achieve several milestones on transportation and mobility issues. Among others, one, we are no longer considered as among the top 10 most congested cities in the world, according to the 2020 TomTom -tom Traffic Index. In fact, we dropped down to as far as 31st positions. Two, as the number of cyclists in Jakarta has increased significantly. Even in some areas, it increases by tenfold. We have been encouraging people to change their mindset, to change their perspective about cycling from a sport or lasers into transport. It's a simple transformation, but it changes the way we view cycling. And we embrace these new trends by pushing our mobility programs even more during the pandemic. For example, one, integrating our various public transportation mode. And these integrations has tripled the number of daily ridership of public transportations within three years. And it is a big jump. And two, we're designating 96 kilometers of bike lanes supported by 52 bike sharing spots. And we're planning for around 500 kilometers of bike lanes. All of this effort have been done by collaborations involving NGOs, private sectors, universities, even individual citizens. They have been actively engaged, actively involved in the development of the city. So the way we look at this is they are co-creator of city development, while us in the city government act as collaborator. And in fact, in 2019, we declared our city as a city of collaborations. So judging from experience, we believe that the strong collaborations between cities across the globe are the way forward to tackle the world's daunting challenges such as climate change. And as the vice chair of the C40, I'm reinforcing our commitment and extending our invitations to further collaborate with all of you in our effort to achieve net zero emission target by 2050 and to reduce 50% of greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. And Jakarta, we have been learning from initiative coming from many global cities. We have learned from Tokyo, from Paris, from Seoul, Medellin, Pune, and many, many other cities. But we're also keen to share our own experience to the world. It is with that spirit that we convey our eagerness to join hands with all of you and to declare that now is indeed the time to act for sustainable mobility, for urban resilience, and for strong collaborations. Thank you. Warm regards from Jakarta. Domo arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Governor. The last but not the least, I would like to move on to our final speaker, high-level climate champion, Nigel Topping. Thank you, Nigel, for being part of today's session. Actually, we are a little bit ahead of schedule. I'm very surprised. Everyone's keeping on time. So you have an honor to um, spend your time, I mean, um, maximum five minutes, but um, um, for your statement. Please, Nigel. Konbanwa. Um, firstly, let me welcome the initiative of Governor Koike, the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, and ICLI in convening this gathering at such a critical time. Uh, I must say I was ready to press the um, translation button, 
But I want to thank all my Japanese, French, and Indonesian colleagues for their excellent English. It's 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 truly humbling. Um, so thank you for that. It's really humbling and inspiring to be with with such a, a group of leaders. You know, as as the incoming high-level climate champion for COP26, and together with my Chilean colleague Gonzalo Munoz, the champion for COP25, our central task is to galvanise and accelerate commitments to climate action from the corporations, investors, states and cities that make up what we call the real economy. And we're, we're gathering up these commitments under what we call the race to zero. And I want to thank Mayor Garcetti, um, uh, Governor Koike and other C40 leaders and ICLI for coming together in the cities race to zero as part of this. We hope we can get to many more than a thousand cities by the time we get to Glasgow. I also know we, we often talk about radical collaboration. So I love that Jakarta has, has named itself a city of collaboration. This only together, we say this is a race we can only win if we're all in. And we know that we're in a world that's quickly urbanizing. And so the role of cities and prefectures lies at the very heart of our global challenge. So we've been really encouraged by the leadership throughout Japan with Minister Koizumi, Governor Koike, and Eklai. I think galvanizing, I think now more than 260 leaders of Japanese cities, towns, and villages, representing more than three quarters of Japan's population, committed to achieving net zeros by 2050. This was unthinkable two years ago. And it now puts Japan ahead of the pack, I think, for net zero commitments at the sub-national level. But we know that sort of commitment also creates the political space for leadership for Prime Minister Suga to make his announcement last year. Now, of course, the race to zero is about much more than just declaring long-term visions. Most mayors, most CEOs will not be in position in 2050. It's really about immediate goals for implementation, putting those 2050 commitments into action now. So I, I really want to um, salute Governor Koike's very specific plan of not just halving emissions by 2030, but how to do that. And that's what we need from every, we really need to focus now on the next five and 10 years to set this tone for more immediate ambition at national level, um, including, um, you know, we hope that, the, the, we're hopeful now that the current energy mix review in Japan um, will lead to much deeper national emissions targets. As, as, as Mike Bloomberg said, it's something which Japanese businesses have been calling for as well. I love, um, uh, Governor Koike, your focus on buildings, I think often neglected, and we know that green retrofit will be one of the great ways of creating employment as well as improving the quality of jobs as we recover from COVID. Also love your focus on green hydrogen. Uh, I, I would say that we also increasingly see that the pace of this transition is a matter of national competitiveness and that cities can particularly help drive not just the switch to renewable energy, but the early phase out of polluting combustion engines. This has been one of the keys to Japanese automotive industry's competitiveness. So hopefully we'll start to see moves towards 2030 or 2035 like we're seeing elsewhere in the world. I'm also thrilled to see your promotion of green finance as a major um, finance center. You know, we, we helped launch the Net Zero Asset Management Initiative in December, and we're really impressed that $9 trillion of assets signed up to that. Clearly, the signals that Philip is in, and Larry Fink have indicated from BlackRock that they're pursuing the same trajectory means I think we can say we've got nearly $20 trillion of assets committed now. So this is unstoppable momentum. Um, at the local level, I think that bringing more of Japan, Japan's local governments into the race to zero is about, as Mayor Gossetti says, offering people a more efficient, safer, and healthier urban environment to go about their own lives. And, uh, you know, improving the efficiency of our buildings, um, getting back to the bike as a means of transport, not just a means of leisure, and creating new green zones for our children to play in with clean air. So to all our speakers today, I'd like to end by saying we see huge potential for a more dedicated national plan in Japan and elsewhere to assist cities and towns with less capacity to accelerate their own zero carbon journeys. Um, the race to zero is not just about big declarations and commitments, it's about real examples of exponential transformational change. Change now, it is time to act. Thank you for your leadership, Governor Kuroke and Tokyo, Tokyo Metropolitan Government. Thank you to all your Japanese colleagues. Together, we will win the race to zero. Arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you. Gozaimasu. Thank you for your encouraging message, Nigel. I would like to invite Governor Koike back for a closing remark. Governor well, Koike, please. Well, well uh, today I'm so glad to hear from you all about your strong determination to overcome the COVID-19 crisis and 
act toward decarbonization. And I have been encouraged to develop the climate action movement from Tokyo. Thank you again. Arigato gozaimasu. And let me express my sincere gratitude to all the parties concerned, uh, particularly C40 and ICLE, for their cooperation in holding today's meeting. And I would also like to issue the climate actions announced by the participants today as a joint message. Um, can you show? Yes, yes, this is it. Joint message accelerating climate action. So we, the participants, clearly acknowledge the threat of the climate crisis and affirm that we will accelerate climate action through effective measures and lead the world to achieve decarbonization. And, and after the closing of this meeting, uh, the joint message will be presented to the world on our website along with comments from speakers. So now is the time to act. And with the time to act slogan, I would like to accelerate concrete climate, act, climate action together with businesses and NGOs toward COP26 uh, 20, held this year in the UK in November. And thank you very much, Suzanne and uh, David, for joining us before breakfast. <laughs> yeah. And also, Anis, uh, what time is it now? It's 9 o'clock? Nine? Uh, it's, yes, it's 8 o'clock now. In 8 o'clock in Jakarta. <laughs> and thank you very much for joining us uh, from Switzerland. Yes, Nigel? Nigel, you are in U Nigel, UK. UK. In UK. Yeah, in England. Yeah. Uh, Philip, what? Philip, Philip's in Switzerland. Oh, yeah, OK. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, Eric, uh, who speaks uh, fluent Japanese, because he, Eric Galsetti, the uh, mayor of, uh, uh, um, of, of Los Angeles, he spent some, some uh, year or some days in, 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 in Japan to, uh, when he was the uh, high school student. A senior high school student. So this is why he speaks good Japanese. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much, all, all of you. And uh, I really appreciate. And uh, um, I'm so happy to announce this uh, um, joint message, uh, accelerating climate action to the world. So um, finally, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for participating in this uh, great uh, um, forum tonight, or today, to this morning. <laughs> difficult. Arigatou gozaimashita. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Arigatou gozaimashita. Thank you so much.